Dave here, how are you? I've been asked by someone to explain how I did the lighting in my workshop. Now I'll do all that, I'll explain the placement, the wattage, the lumens and the degrees Kelvin that I went for. Stick with me, I'll take you through it. You'll notice that all of the walls in my workshop and all of these boxes are white or very close to white. They reflect a lot of the light that comes down from the ceiling. Even the ceiling here is sarking. So that's a silver paper, and on the other side of it is two inches of fiberglass that's bonded to it. So I've got a double helping there. I've got a good reflective surface and an insulator for the roof. What I've done is I've staggered the lights. So I'll have one very close to the wall at the far end. The next light along is over on this side of the ceiling. Then the next one is on the other side and they alternate. Now they're all spaced about six feet apart, that's about 1.8 meters. They just happen to be connected to each rafter. So the rafters in here are spaced around three feet apart. So it's pretty convenient for me. I didn't have to muck around too much. I screwed all the fittings up for the electrician and then it was just a matter of him doing the wiring and connecting. Each fitting in this room, and there are 12 fittings, each fitting has two 36 watt tubes in them that are cool daylight and release around 850 lumens each tube, two tubes per fitting. So I'm getting around 1700 lumens per fitting and I'll go into all of that and cool white that's displayed in degrees Kelvin. <laughs> it sounds complicated but it's pretty easy. Here we go. For the most part, degrees Kelvin runs from naught through to 10,000 degrees. Now that's what we see. I'm sure it goes beyond that. There was a person who did some testing with a carbon block and heated it up and noticed the different colours that it went through, the different temperatures that he exposed the carbon block to. Now, I've got a couple of pictures here and I'll show you how it shows that around about 1,000 degrees Kelvin, which is down the bottom of the scale, is red. It's similar to a candle light and then we move up through degrees Kelvin through to around daylight, cool daylight. Now this is what my room is, cool daylight. That's the, where I find the best for my old eyes to be able to see things in here. And then you go through getting bluer. Alright, because we're going through changes of different types of light that are available now we're into LED lighting, they looked at it and thought, well, we should really show some comparisons to how, how many lumens, and that's the intensity, how bright a light is, not the colour, just how bright it is. I'm not going to go into the science of a lumen. So these tubes are 850 lumens each. If they were 500 lumens each, this room would be a lot darker. The colour would be the same, but it just wouldn't be as intense. I've probably got in this room around 18,000 lumens of light total. So now we shop for bulbs by lumens rather than by how many watts. Now one of the other things in this workshop is all of my lights have got what's called a diffuser fitted to them. Now a diffuser is a plastic shield that sits around the pair of tubes. It's there for two reasons. First reason is to protect the bulbs. If I bump that and break it, or it's much better than to break that than break an actual light bulb and have the glass shatter and fall all over the place, especially with the dogs in here. Uh, the other reason the diffusers are there are to diffuse the light. They spread the light a whole lot more evenly than if I just had the bare bulbs there. Now, one of the cool things I did with my workshop was I put a sensor. Now, just up here, I've got a sensor. I'll show you a picture of it. It has about a 180 degree span of detection. So I have a door over on that side. I'll show you a picture, a little festival thing hanging on it. I've got another door over on the other side of the workshop and a roller door in the middle. Now, no matter which of these doors that I use to come into this room, the sensor will pick me up. It's a motion sensor and it will turn the lights on. It leaves them on for about 20 minutes if there's no motion here. If I was to just sit here still for 20 minutes, which I couldn't do, if I was to sit here for 20 minutes, do nothing, the lights would turn off. But if I'm walking around, 
it's not a problem. So using the machines is not an issue at all for me. Now why have I got a sensor light on here? I'll use the key to come in one of the side doors and there's no switch anywhere near there. And rather than walk right the way through the room up to where the light is in the garage and trip over things, it's so much better to have the sensor just pops on and it looks after me. Now, apart from the sensor light that I have inside the room here, which is great, I also have a couple of lights leading up to the doorway. Now, the doorway is an, in an area where it's quite dark. I live in a rural area. There's no other lights around, so I don't have city lights lighting up. So I have to make sure that when I come around the corner of the garage and when I come in through one of the side doors, the place lights up for me. So I have a couple of fixed solar lights. Now they're not in shadows, so they pick up the sunlight during the day and charge the batteries in the solar light. The light directly above the door is in total shade. It will never get light on it. It'll never get direct sunlight. Now, how I got around that was I purchased a light that has a cable and a small solar panel on the end of the cable. So the cable's about two meters long. I positioned that cable, or oh sorry, I positioned that solar panel up on the wall above the roof so it has full sunlight. Now I'm going to give you a quick heads up on how to work out the best place to put solar panels. I live on about the same latitude south as Sydney is. Now that's about 34 degrees south. Now I'm talking here in Southern Hemisphere. In the Northern Hemisphere, the same kind of thing will apply, but you'll be facing south for best orientation. I will be facing north because I'm south of the equator. I have to look back towards the equator. If you're north of the equator, you have to look south towards the equator. That's your best solar orientation. 34 degrees south of the equator, I need to face my panel north and I also have to have it 34 degrees below horizontal. That's just a rule of thumb. The optimum is going to be for all year around 29 to 30 degrees. If I want to be really tricky and I need to get a whole lot of solar uh, activity on photovoltaic cells, what I would do is I would set my panels at 11 degrees 11 degrees down from the horizontal for summer and the date that I would have to do that is on the 18th of October and then I would switch it down to 50 degrees on the 8th of April. That would give me the best for both summer and then for winter. Now you can go crazy and you can do it by the quarter if you want to but who in their right mind is going to get up on a roof and do all that? Not me. Okay, so I have this little solar light and I'm going to show you coming around the corner. This is really cool. Here I'm coming around the corner and I've got the little courtesy lights down on the bottom there. You can see those. And then as I'm coming along, pop, there it goes, on goes the light and I can open up the door and then come in to the room here and do whatever I want. The intensity of lighting is going to be totally up to you. Whatever you can afford, how much light you really need, what you're going to do to keep yourself safe, you'll find a happy medium. As I say in here, I've got, so I have 12 fittings in a 5 meter by 12 meter long room. Thanks for watching. Keep on coming back. If you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up. More, some links in the description box down the bottom here. I'll show you where I got that little solar shed light from. It's a cutie. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye.